I'm in Grand Ledge, Michigan, and this is like the newest record store in all of Michigan. Uh, Chris Edmondson, he just opened this about five weeks ago. So, uh, kind of excited for him. I've known Chris for a number of years. Even during the pandemic, we wound up meeting at a record store in Ohio of all places. So, I'm looking forward to coming in here and seeing what Chris has. Uh, again, kind of the dream, opening his own record store. So, let's go see. Okay, Rural Records. So toys in one shop from 1010. Chris right here, the other, the official owner. Let's see what we got here. The Immortal Sea Snakes. That one.
after the midweek. So we began at a record store in Grand Ledge, Michigan. In Grand Ledge, it is about, I mean, it's next to the capital Lansing, to the west, not not far from Lansing at all. Very, very easy to get to. And the the owner, the proprietor is Chris Edmondson, and he went in, he went in with someone else to do this. So he has half the shop and the other person has half the shop. The other person has more vintage toys. So he got a little something for everybody. So um, Chris has only been opened maybe about Probably since I filmed that, maybe half a year now, something like that. But it's the dream. He wanted to always open a record store, and he was able to open it. And I've known Chris through the years through record shows, because he sold at record shows. I've met him out uh, actually in a record store down in Ohio. So uh, it was good to go and see his shop and to take a look inside and found some great things in there. So... He's living the dream. He opened his record store, and isn't that something we all can kind of dream about wanting to do? Just you have to decide if you want to make that jump or not. So congratulations, Chris. And if you're out in the Lansing area, head on over there to Grand Ledge to Rural Records, and yeah, you, you won't be disappointed. So now let's look at some records I used to have. Brought back into my collection since the flood. <laughs> we're still doing that. You know, I think, you know, we're working almost to three years since the flood, but I'm still bringing back in records that I used to have. You know, quite a few of the records I buy now are new. And, you know, ones that I never used, you know, that I didn't have before because it was such a large collection. When you, I looked at what I lost, you know, it was about 12,000 CDs and albums. And now I've limited myself in space, so I can't bring it all back. But it was at a time where I would just buy whatever. I'd go in and, you know, to the bargain bins, buy, 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 buy. I was working on volume. Now I'm more working on things that I want that I will keep and be happy with and you know and I keep weeding out records which was something new and different but if I'm not going to listen to it then I don't have room for it so let's go through what we have this time and we're going to start here with uh, Miles Davis Porgy and Bess and this is the original Masters recording here is the recording I had. This actually was, I believe, from 2006, possibly, uh, when I received that. But I saved the vinyl from the flood because Miles Davis, I, I saved everything of his because he is like my, my favorite artist. I really, really like him so much. So I... They've been reissuing these 45s, or uh, these 40, the uh, Mo, MoFi has been reissuing these, sometimes in 45 RPM, sometimes in 33 RPM. And this one here, I believe, was a 45 RPM. See, it's it's even still sealed. It is. This, this is a 45 RPM. And you say, well, it's, it's sealed. You, have, you haven't opened it. I play this one. Now, I can play this, but really I'm not looking for covers, so I bought a MoFi for a cover. Yeah, think about that. Think about the sense. <laughs> but, you know, it's sealed. Uh, but I do have this to listen to. This is not my favorite Miles Davis album. It is, you know, Gil Evans, he really is a big part of it. They have a fairly large band, like a big band, you could say, there is some very beautiful music. This is a highly respected album from Miles Davis from 1958. Uh, I, I do like more of his bop uh, stuff. I love his fusion work. And the stuff in the 60s is my wheelhouse for Miles Davis, especially late 60s, early 70s. Still important record, really nice to have. And MoFi, and of course I do have the vinyl that I had for my other purchase. So happy to have that back in the collection. We have, here we go, Drive by Truckers. Another album we used to have. Here's a group I really like. I've been a huge fan of Drive by Truckers. And this is the first Drive by Truckers I had ever bought. I had quite a few of their 
albums on CD, but I was happy to get this one back in vinyl again. Uh, it is a reissue that was done. This album originally came out in 2007. It was the last album done by Jason Isbell uh, with the with the group. He was just he he, he was a mess. Alcohol was just messing him up something fierce, and he was really, really struggling. Patterson Hood wrote quite a bit of the music on here and performed it, you know, and so he, he was a big factor when you came to, um, you know, with, with the music. Uh, also, Mike Cooley. Uh, usually it's Patterson Hood, Mike Cooley. Mike Cooley did write quite a bit. But Patterson Hood wrote most of it. It's a three LP set. Great to have it back. Of the drive-by truckers, if you ever wanted one, this is the one to get. It's kind of dark, kind of gothic south, you could say. Uh, a really, really important album. And it's just put together so well. From 1969, we have King Crimson. I uh, obviously a classic. Everyone pretty much knows this album. And so I had it, but for me, you know what I like best about this album? This picture. In in Puerto Rico, there was uh one one of the offices there. I um and this is before I, I left and I came back, you know, to work in the States. I made a giant mural in this guy's office. And I used paper and I had to put it together of this. And so I drew this out and it took up this big wall in his office. And so he comes in, you know, he, he was he was off on the weekend and I'm doing this and he comes in. <laughs> what the heck? Uh, you know, I wasn't colored in, it was just drawn. He left it, he loved it. So people would walk into the office and see this big-ass picture of this. Oh, God, it was great. That's my favorite part of the whole album. It's, it is a classic of all the King Crimson albums. Yeah, it, I believe Robert Fripp kept with King Crimson. Most everyone else went on to other things. But this album was so well put together. It was so different for the time. 1969, you know, there was these prog albums, but nothing was like this. I find it accessible, and I'm not a big prog guy, but this was great stuff, so <laughs> King Crimson. And, uh, yeah, in Puerto Rico, I think that he still has that up in his office, that mural. It was pretty funny. He just comes in, no, not a clue uh, what I'd been doing in his office, so, yeah. Uh, cured Disintegration. And I wish I had my original vinyl on this, but I don't. I did buy this when it originally came out. There's an inner sleeve from it. What a great Cure album. Yeah, you know, this really put them into mainstream. You know, they'd been kind of a, you know, uh, an underground band or just, you know, one on the fringes. This came out. And it just pushed them up. And it was 1989. I has pictures of yous on here. Love Song, Lullaby, Fascination Street, Disintegration. It's a dark album. It's really dark. But some of the tunes on here are very, very poppy. And, and it connected with the public. And so, I, I, you know, it's one of those albums I had to get back in. And so I did. So this is a repress, and this came out in uh, 2010, this particular version. Uh, you know, it is one of my all-time favorite Cure albums. I love Kiss Me, Kiss Me, but this one is the one I played, and, you know, it kind of broke them big. So Cure Disintegration came out originally in 1989. Then we have this. Bruce Springsteen's Nebraska. And I'm too lazy to pull it out. Uh, this came off vinyl, me please. Is it my favorite Bruce Springsteen? Not really, but through the years, it has gained more favor. 
I've, I've started to like it more and more. And so when Vitamin Please was due, this was coming out, I was trying to say, do I really need it or not? And I decided I did. Uh, first off, I'm from Nebraska originally, so there's, there's a plus right there. It has the wonderful song, uh, Highway Patrolman. And I, I just think that's, that's an incredible, incredible song. It's dark, very dark album. It's very bleak. He doesn't have all the E Street band going here. And, and so I just thought, nah, I've, I've learned to like this more and more as the years have gone. So why not get it? So I was happy to bring that back into my collection on Nebraska, the Vinyl Me Please version. Here we have Greta Van Fleet from the Fires. I had their first two EPs. This puts them all together. I liked the earlier Greta Van Fleet. I liked the fact that they sound or they were sounding like Led Zeppelin. That's what I liked about them. I thought as they've gone, they've kind of changed up their sound and they've lost that wail, that ferocity that was happening. But this put those first EPs together that I had. Some of them are worth some money now, but they, I wasn't able. I, they, they didn't get saved in the flood at the time. I didn't know they were going to become worth that much. Uh, so I was happy to see you know, my local store, Radio Wasteland, when he was able to bring this back in and get them. I truly love that early Greta Van Fleet. They live, they, they grew up in a town about 40 miles from here in Frankenmuth, great German town, great place to go. It's number one tourist destination in Michigan, uh, but not because of Greta Van Fleet. Maybe it is now, I don't know. So this just a com combination of their EPs, really, really good. Finally, got these back into my collection. This is the first Beatles album I ever had. Well, uh, obviously it's not. That one's gone, but I rebought this. And this, you know, when I was looking, I remember I was trying to decide. I was asking for these for Christmas, and I wasn't getting them. I mean, I, I asked for this for Christmas, and I got Spike Jones. I asked for it at Christmas a second time. Oh, man, what kind of piece of crap? Oh, they gave me the Partridge family. So I, I just, that's, uh, I stopped asking for music for Christmas because they were not going to get me what I wanted because it was too expensive for them. I, my dad was a small town minister. So I finally was able to buy this as I was looking at these. This is the Beatles that I knew. See how clean cut they were? That appealed to me. I'm growing up in rural Nebraska. This, in a minister's family. This is what we want. Then you had these guys. Look at that. They're hippies. Look at all that long hair. And there's beards that John Lennon scared me. I mean, he, he didn't look trustworthy. If you saw him on the street, you'd be going, you know, stranger danger, stranger danger. I, you just, would you jump in his car? I don't think so. Would you jump in their car? Sure you would. You would go for a ride with them. These guys? Uh-uh. No way, man. So... I remember deciding, and of course, I bought this one. It had the early hits. That's what I knew from them. I knew them from a cartoon in the 60s, the Beatles cartoon. That is my education of the Beatles growing up. I did not know a lot of the songs on here. In choir, I began to learn, you know, we, we sang in choir quite a few Beatles songs in the 70s. And so I began to learn some of their other ones. But for the most part, this was like a drug album. This was the clean Beatles. And it had, you know, Eleanor Rigby. It had Michelle, Yellow Submarine, Nowhere Man. Those were all songs that we would sing in choir. We did not sing anything from this. So, but now... I love this one much more than I love this one. But when I was younger, scary Beatles, <gasps> happy Beatles. It's just how you're raised and what you look at when you're growing up. So I'm happy to get both of these back into the collection again. You know, I am not a Beatles completist, though I think I probably have all their albums. These are the two I will play the most because they have all the hits. And I love hits. 
nice inexpensive one to bring back into a collection. Graham Parker squeezing out the sparks. One of the angry young men. They said, you know, Elvis Costello, Joe Jackson, and Graham Parker were the angry young men. I, I don't know exactly what they were angry about, but this is a heck of a good album. One that you can pick up dirt cheap, squeezing out the sparks. It has Discovering Japan is on here, which is just phenomenal. Waiting for the UFOs. Nobody hurts you. You can't be too strong. Such a great album. So inexpensive. Graham Parker just, his albums just, they don't become worth anything. But he really made some good stuff, especially when you look in this late 70s, uh, early 80s. And this one came out in 1979. I it, He began to kind of, it, the albums eventually weren't as interesting. But his first three albums, I think, were fantastic. Nothing special on the inner sleeve, so... Really great to bring this in. Doesn't cost a lot. If you've never tried it or bought one, this is great. It's just some great um, rock from the late 70s. This was a nice find to bring back. Molly Hatchet. I bought this in college. What did I know of Mo Molly Hatchet? I knew zero. I just knew that that was a badass cover. I mean, how could I not want this. Look at that cover. That is, oh, this is good. I was reading a lot of fantasy novels and at the time, you know, Lord of the Rings. I'm, I'm in college, so, you know, that's, that's the kind of stuff you want to read. And this appealed to everything that I just thought was so cool. Yeah, I just, no idea who they were. I bought it based solely on that cover, which I tend to do a lot. But, this does have, you know, Bounty Hunter, Gator Country, Dreams I'll Never See, which I thought they had made. I didn't know that was done by the Almond Brothers. But their version is phenomenal because they use all these guitars. I mean, it's it's Southern guitar at, at its finest. Uh, this came out in 1978. I, uh, yeah, I bought it for the artwork Really happy when I got this back in. As far as for me, Molly Hatchet, this is the only one you need. Now, I have their next album, and it's good. This one's great. Really is good. Uh, fantastic album. Super good. So that's what I brought back in my collection. So I hope you enjoyed that. Great stuff that I couldn't be more delighted to have. Thanks for hanging out with me, and talk to you later. Bye.